Welcome back to Ramping Up Your English. This is segment two of episode 37. I promised a video clip about dogs, and here it is. Watch and enjoy. It's hard to believe that the same wolves that shared our ancient ancestors' campfire have changed to be this domesticated animal. But what hasn't changed is that these furry critters, the dogs of today, remain man's best friend. There are still wolves, all right, and they are still wild, but it's also true that all of today's dogs come from wolves. Some dogs still have some of that wolf appearance. Hmm. She likes the combing. Oh, yeah. 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 But others, not so much. This video clip is about those, not the wild wolf, but about the faithful dog. This is one dog rescued from a shelter. It lives in a household with many well-cared-for dogs, the home of writer Paul Handover and his wife, two Oregon residents who have an especially high opinion of dogs. Now, they're very, very special animals. And this young man here, he came from a couple that couldn't handle a rambunctious puppy and was going to give him up, and he came our way, so he's somewhat of a rescue dog. Paul Handover advocates taking in rescue dogs. There's a feeling abroad from some people that not, not to take a rescue dog uh, because there's something sort of wrong about them, and that's, that's poppycock. Um, rescue dogs are, are often much better uh, to have as a, as a pet than, than taking a puppy. Especially for older people. Especially for older people. And the other thing is, there's a, there's a sense, it's, it's a subjective emotional position, but it's, there's a sense that rescue dogs know that they've been rescued, and when they're in a loving home, they, they respond so much to that. I mean, we like to think so, it's very difficult to, to prove that scientifically, but... The key, says Handover, is love. Unconditional love. I would, I would just endorse and amplify the, the unconditional love. Um, dogs, dogs have an ability to demonstrate unconditional love in a way that we humans can at times struggle to, to really recognize. And showing them unconditional love, loving them for who they are, what they are, is really valuable and it, it generates the depth of relationship which is both important to the dog and, is, and then in turn is important to the human owner, the human friend. You notice there's no arguing. Everyone just waits for their treats. There's no fighting. You'll be getting on at the and another one. And Pharaoh gets another one. He's a good boy. He's a good boy. That's it.
Paul Handover esteems dogs so much, he's written a book entitled Learning from Dogs. I'm thinking of training this one here, Brandy, as a service dog, because he's so laid back and calm. He sure is. And I have Parkinson's, and I need a little bit of stability sometimes, mm -hmm. and he would be perfect. Brandy. Dogs can be trained to help people in many special ways. Best known, perhaps, are dogs trained as guide dogs for the blind, also called seeing eye dogs. In Southern Oregon, some dogs are trained for people who can't hear, from an organization called Dogs for the Deaf. German Shepherds protect people and their possessions. They can be trained as guard dogs. And some dogs are trained as therapy dogs. They help people of all ages cope with emotional trauma or just loneliness. Dogs often form very strong bonds with people fortunate enough to have dogs in their life. It's not surprising that in many countries, including the United States, dogs make up the largest number of pets. It's been pointed out that the word dog, spelled backward, is God. You may be surprised to learn that dogs can also be teachers. That's the theme of another video clip that you'll see soon on Ramping Up Your English. Welcome back to Ramping Up Your English. Our previous episode on cats gave us a chance to share some knowledge about English phonics. We found a multitude of words rhyming with cat, all using the short A sound so common in basic English words, and in syllables for that matter. Let's go a little farther today. The word can has the same A sound as in cat, and we can use the same method as before to find the rhyming words. So the letter an uses the first letter of the alphabet and rhymes just fine with can. There's a quick reminder here that the vowels are A, E, I, O, U, and sometimes Y. These rarely begin a word that rhymes with the word containing a short vowel sound, since the word already has a vowel. Now, the letter A after that one is B, begins a word that rhymes with can, which is ban. Then there's the name Dan. Now, let's look at the next letters, E, F, G and H. Uh, e is a vowel and doesn't start a word rhyming with can, but F starts a word fan, a device for moving air, and neither G nor H has a word rhyming with can. Now the letter I is also a vowel and doesn't work, but the letter J works. Jan is a common name. K sounds like it would work with can, but can starts with a C, uh, not the letter K. Now, L only works in a computer term way. A LAN is a type of network on a computer. And then the letter M works for man. N works for the name Nan. O doesn't work. P works just fine as pan, something in which you cook food. The letter Q doesn't work with can, but R does for ran, the past tense of run. S doesn't work, but T works with the color tan. And the verb tan, which means to expose yourself to the sun to darken your skin, tan also means to cure an animal's hide to make leather. Now, out of these letters, only V is a short word rhyming with can. That's van, a type of automobile. I can't think of a rhyming word starting with any other letters. Now, see if you can play around with more of these words that have the short A sound. The easiest to recognize are the short uh, words with a consonant, then a, a vowel, an A in this case, and then another consonant. Remember, a consonant is a letter that's not a vowel, and the vowels are A, E, I, O, U, and sometimes Y. 
Now, we strayed a bit from today's theme of dogs. Dogs have a lot to teach us people, knowledge that goes way back to their wolf roots. We'll hear from someone who has written a book about that knowledge after this. Is it true that ramping up your English is going to the dogs? Yes, it is. And cats, horses, rabbits, geese, jaguars, and more. Join us in our new unit on animals. Ramping up your English is for intermediate English learners from all language backgrounds and all ages. We take a content-based approach to helping you reach higher levels of English proficiency. Our new thematic unit is animals. This science unit helps viewers advance in language functions that will stretch their English skills and learn a few things from dogs as well. Openness, trust, faithfulness, loyalty, playfulness, and more. The, the, the qualities that we as humans really do need to learn and to have in our lives on a daily basis because they deliver such beautiful rewards. Ramping up your English can be seen on the Ashland Home Network on channels 15 and 115. It's on channel 182 on Charter Cable in the rest of Southern Oregon. Join us for better English and a grand time with animals.